Good morning. I love being in chapel here with you all. And this is the first time this year that I'm the main chapel speaker. And so today I want to talk a little bit about why we do this and why this gathering is important. But bef before I do that, I want to make some, in some introductions and to recognize all the people who make our chapel services possible. First of all, I want to introduce our chapel prefects who help lead every service and who always pitch in and do whatever is needed. And so I'm going to ask them to stand as I call their names and uh, continue to stand. Lauren Buxton and Mason Guthrie and Melanie Kaplan and Mike Michaela Littlewood and Ella Oppenheimer and James Wodarski. Thank you all. I want, to, I want to also introduce our amazing musical team, uh, Dr. Rushi. <laughs> Doc, Dr. D'Angelo. I want to recognize Reverend Ofori. It's, it's, a, it's a huge pleasure for me to be able to collaborate with Reverend Ofori this year. I want, to introduce, I want to recognize the technology team in the back, Mr. Dobbins, Mr. English, and Mr. Moffitt. I want, I, I'm going to have the trepidation to ask Mr. Packard to stand, because Mr. Packard's steady and calm leadership, I can't tell you how important that is for the work that I do. So thank you, Mr. Packard. <laughs> Finally. I want to ask the most important people to stand, and that's all of you, so please stand up. Thank you. Your, your, willingness, your willingness to participate, your willingness to jump in, to sing, to read, to do all that you do, that's what makes chapel uh, successful. So give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, and please be seated. Our readings this morning were all about community, about how we're woven together uh, with one another and with the natural world, how we depend on one another for all that's good in life, and how, if we work together, we can be a shining city on a, on a hill. We humans can't exist without community, and communities are a huge factor in our lives, and Brooks School is one factor like that. It's a strong and a good community. And I want to share with you one example of the strength and the impact of this community that you may not really be aware of. It's a very personal example, uh, but it's one that's important for me to share. Those of you who were here last year, which as most of you know, that my dear, beautiful wife, Anne, always came with me to chapel last year. She was in the late stages of Alzheimer's disease, and she couldn't be left alone. It wasn't safe. So she came with me. And every time we came, as we were on our way, she would want to know where we were going. And I, I always told her we're going to Brook School for chapel, for the chapel service, to see all the young people. And sometimes that registered with her. Sometimes she could remember being here before, but more often, she couldn't quite grasp it until we got here. And then when we did get here, she was really happy. She was happy to hear the music and the singing. She was happy to watch what was going on. And most of all, she was happy to be with you all, to see you all, to be with you, to enjoy your presence, your good spirit, and your positive energy. So at a time when our life was really hard, you brought joy into her life and into mine just by being who you are and by being here in community. Most of you saw Anne back there, back then when she was here, although you didn't really get to know her. And you didn't get to know her in her good times, in her good days before she was ill. I was unbelievably lucky. I was incredibly blessed to marry a, per a person who was 
very, very beautiful both inside and out. She was someone who was incredibly kind, patient, caring, unselfish, someone who never gave up, gave up on those she cared about, including me. And it was a good thing because I was a little crazy in our first years together. We didn't have any money, but I wanted to travel and I'd read Jack Kerouac on the road. So we bummed back and forth across the United States a couple of times. We hitchhiked around Europe and North Africa and then Central and South America. <coughs> South America. And this next slide is, is Anne in Peru in 1970 with our daughter, our first child, who was then about four months old. I had also read Mark Twain. So I thought it was important to build a raft and drift down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, which was a really crazy, dangerous adventure that we were lucky to survive, but we did. <laughs> and here we are on the raft in, on the Mississippi. That's in Memphis. We lived on that raft for three years, uh, three months. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and Anne stuck with me the whole way through all my craziness and she never gave up, God knows why. And it was after that raft trip that God finally caught up with me and gave me a good whack on the head and said, look, Jim, take a good look at yourself. Straighten up and fly right. And that did turn me around. You know, when God whacks you on the head, you tend to pay attention. Anne said at the time that she'd always known that I would sooner or later straighten out. And we went on to have a wonderful life and a much more conventional one together. I couldn't have had a better, a better partner or life companion. And I couldn't have had a friend with a better sense of humor. This is one Halloween a few years back. And this tells you something about our relationship. The hardest thing in my life was losing Anne little by little to our Alzheimer's disease and then losing her altogether this past July when she passed on. But in, the, in that last year of her life, being here with you was always a bright light and a source of joy for both of us. I still don't know who it was, who was the kind and caring angel who took this picture last February and posted it on Instagram. But I'll never forget that kindness and it'll always be for me the shining example of this community of Brooks School at its best. I'm the school minister. I'm the guy whose job it is to talk about God. I know that there are some people who'd rather I didn't talk about God or who'd rather I used a different name or no name at all for the Great Spirit. I don't think the name is what matters. There are a thousand names for God. None of them is really adequate because the Spirit's infinite and beyond our understanding and beyond any name we can give. And although no name is adequate, and the spirit is far beyond our ability to understand, we can still encounter that spirit and come to know and be known by that spirit. And most of all, it happens when we're in community. Jesus said God is within you. Sometimes I think another way to think about that is that God is the voice of truth. I believe the voice of truth lives deep down in every one of us, at the very core of our being. It's often hidden, it gets covered up by all the stuff we're busy with in our lives, all the things we gotta do, all the complexities of our daily lives and all the complexities of our relationships with others. But I do think that for almost all of us, there comes a time when all that stuff gets wiped away, gets melts away and the voice of truth speaks to us clearly from the very deepest part of us. And we see then if we don't already, that the one thing that truly matters in our lives is love. Love and being together in community and caring for one another. At its best, this community does that. And you've done it for me and for my dear, beautiful Anne. So thank you and bless you all.